welcome everyone to another edition of our Red Bar Live Chats. Um, today we have uh, as our special guests, uh, George Bamford, uh, Bamford Watch Department and uh, James Thompson of Black Badger. Um, and we're just gonna basically hand it over to you guys to talk about your latest collaboration, your previous collaborations and whatever the hell else you wanna talk about. That's such a terrible idea. I know. So um, to everybody- Fight, 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 fight. To everybody that's in attendance, you have questions, um, please put them in the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen. Um, feel free to chat amongst yourselves in, in the chat function. And uh, David, Adam, and I will act as moderators for the uh, Q&A. So James, over to you, bad idea and all. I'll, oh, I'll... hang on, I'm just, I'm busy screwing up the chat window here. Fantastic, I, I love it, screw up. So, so can I ask James a question on the Q&A? Because it'd be quite nice to kind of just- really George, you can't borrow any more money. I just can't. Okay. <laughs> You're a black hole. I'm not going to invest in your pizzeria. <laughs> Please do not. We're not. We're not making a pizza watch or a. What did you say? You're not doing that again. Right. So the funny thing is, Adam would buy it if he did. So I, I think actually we're okay. He would. Yeah. You got one. Yeah, one sold already. Um, so ta let's let's start by talking about the coffee watch, and if you want to, um, you want me to, <clears throat> you want me to bring up the photos, and I'll I'll share the screen. Yeah, uh, George, you wanna you wanna run point on this? Otherwise, uh, I'll just I'll take every question and just sound like I'm trying to sell you a used boat. I'm I'm really gonna yeah. try and not babble too much here. Look, I like the used boat salesman or the car salesman. I, I I'm very very happy with that. I, I think that's kind of um look. It happened in lockdown. Um, it, we were talking about what, what do you follow on from uh, the Fordite dial. Um, we loved the Ford, we loved, I love the Fordite dial. I love the story behind it. I loved how it worked. Um, you know, I, I just love the whole story of it. And it was like, what can we do next? What, where can we go? And, and it was that thing of like going back and forth on this idea of, how how an age dial works, how all of these different things. And, you know, I loved, I wanted to get a chocolate idea of going through. And I, I remember James and I going back and forth and talking about tobacco, coffee. Uh, you know, there were some weird and wonderful ideas um, that were all doable, as James kind of makes sure that they are doable. Um, and it was just kind of like, well, let's do it and let's do it on a Carrera. So that was kind of the, the initial idea of how, how do we do it? Uh, and then James, you kind of, uh, you rocked it. Um, you know, we're still waiting for five more dials just to tell you, James, that that's why I haven't got it on my wrist, but just, just <laughs> kind of giving you a little bit of a dig on that one. But uh, I know you're wearing a Titan black. <laughs> Thank you. <very> much. <laughs> right, I've got a Monaco one. I've got a tag. I've oh, got nice. A, you know. nice. That's good. So, um, but, um, but James, I'm handing it over to you about how you built it up because the thing is, <laughs> you know, when we looked at it, it was that, that sheet and, and then it was kind of like, how do we, how do we do it and what do we do? And, and I think, you know, the great thing about this was it was very much into the idea of, of doing something that we could, uh, launch and do it in lockdown. Yeah. Gone. That's all I got to say. Um, no, for me, th this is so much more fun than I would say the vast majority of other collaborations that I've been on. Because not all of them, but there's been a couple where they they kind of like to remind you that you're you're the dinner guest. You know, you're the this week's guest star, and don't overstep your boundaries, and don't give us too many ideas, and just be happy with whatever the hell we let you do. Um, but with this, uh, and because you guys are so vertically integrated on stuff, you don't have to deal with committees and budget forecasts and all this stuff that, I mean, to be frank, I couldn't care less about. It actually let it be almost more like, hey, you want to make an album? Fuck yeah, let's do it. Go to the garage and record it. Like this was the watch industry's version of garage rock. And that was what, so bloody fun about it. We didn't have to ask any permission. You know, we, we could try and make a watch out of, fucking, I don't know, you know, recycled bird's nests. And if it catches fire or just goes to crap, well, who cares? Because that's kind of my role in this is 
I'm, I'm very expendable. You know, I mean, thank God Mercedes doesn't work. Thank God Boeing doesn't work this way or we'd be in real serious trouble. But that's, that's kind of what I bring to the party is this, as, I, as I'll say in every interview I ever do, I'm not a watchmaker by any stretch, barely a watch designer. But the way that I work from a materials forward perspective, it lets you come up with these goofy ideas. Let's make a watch dial out of 40-year-old waste car paint. Let's make a watch out of yeah. coffee. You know, and they don't all have to be these kind of out there bordering on goofy ideas. You know, but I don't think I'm the guy that you'll see make a sensible, intelligent, you know, gold Omega DeVille. I'm just not that dude. There's people out there that do it and do it well. But this kind of outsider perspective is, I'm just, I'm having so much fun with it. And it happens so fast that yeah. we don't have time to be bored of it. You know, it's almost like, it's like F1 in the 1960s. You're like, oh, God, I hope the wheel doesn't fall off this time. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Let it get through, through qualifying. And I don't think there's enough of that in the industry both in F1 and in watches, it's become so overly tech and so safe and so decaffeinated. See what I did there? Jeez, that's... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, huh? we, 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 all, we all saw that one. Yeah. That was... Yeah. And that came right out of the holster, too. That was, uh, Le leaf. Yeah. Leaf. <laughs> Show yourself. Swipe, swipe left. Um, I mean, why did you ask him on this panel? I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's fun. It, it, it breaks a stereotype of Canadian. Yeah, he, he does, actually. Because <laughs> I have a potty so, mouth. So, so much so they threw him out. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so I have a question. So you guys... Oh, you know, I, I, no. Do you guys just said you decided during lockdown, like from, from idea to execution, how long did it take? Yeah. Uh, lockdown? Just... Um, it, I, 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 it's... The idea, it was just before, wasn't it, James, when we, yeah. we were kind of like going just before. And I think, you know, if we look at it, I was looking at something like maybe doing Monaco or an El Primero or something else. But the other th what happened with lockdown is it shut everything down, as you know. So, yeah. you know, my watchmaker took his bench home with him and worked from home. And we, you know, and we, I was popping into the office to get parts and things like that. So we were still running as a business. And I remember, you know, shipping um, the, the uh, blank discs to James to get uh, the coffee dart. And it was literally, we were like, oh my God, we've got great ones for the Carrera because of the Fordite. You know how it works. We, we yep. can't reinvent the wheel on this. Let's, let's do it with the Carrera. And it's so, you know, that wonderful window turned out um, amazing to highlight the coffee dial and kind of have that um, tropical vibe to it. And I know that James and I kind of keep on going back on tropical, but it's, it has that kind of, you know, that I love that aged feel already from the coffee. And Which is really funny because I had, I, I didn't hear about the tropical dial aspect until, until I got the press release. Like, oh, okay, okay. Uh, but it totally makes sense. It, it, it totally make, makes sense that you're sort of referencing <clears throat> with a bit of a material wink towards the, the vintage patina dials and you know, the things that are starting to deconstruct. But we're coming at it from such a vastly different direction. Even just the, the basic, really visceral visual appearance of it, you get it, you make the connection. But we're comparing vintage Rolex World War II Pacific Theater dials that were sun bleached and had salt water that leaked. Yeah. And you're comparing that with very, very fine grade espresso. Like where's the red thread on the conspiracy wall that connects those? There's nothing. And that's what was so fun about this is we took, you took such a, if I may say, idiotic leap of faith with this on me. But I mean, good, good on you, pal. I mean, you got stones for doing that. I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah, but, but James, I tell you, you know. Oh yeah, I forgot about pictures. Oh yeah. Um, but James, the thing is, I like working with you. You know, the thing is, when we work together, you know, when we're coming up with the ideas and it's like, can we do this or can we do this? You know, like the next two projects are kind of totally out there. Oh, man. But we're not allowed to say, because if you do say, I'll kill you. Yeah, uh, I'm like, who's I the guy that always spoils the Avengers movies? One of, it, it's, 
Mark Ruffalo, the guy that plays the Hulk, every time he's on like Letterman or Conan O'Brien, he always like makes some comment like, oh, the filming's really good. Everybody dies this week. And then like all the lawyers for Disney are just completely freaking out. And that's what I do. So I'm, I'm just going to wait for you to start every conversation. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, de- I'm definitely not going to go there. But I don't what want I would, your lawyers. But what I would say is that when we were coming, when we were coming at this, it was like, yeah, we've got to do this. And launching it, you know, I, coming back to that thing of how did we do it? You know, did it happen, you know, through lockdown? As soon as lockdown happened, <laughs> I, was, I was really, you know, we, we moved into design phase and moved into how can we, match it how can we do the right strap for it it was an aged um, brown leather how can you know it was even i remember james you and i going back and forth about the um coloring of of how we did the text on it and yeah. you know i i would and it's 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 gold ivory and and those were the things what we wanted to get through and you know you look at the patina and you know james said about um you know, I, t- I talk about tropical dial, but it was more like the old Panerai, the old Italian war, uh, World War II Panerai watches. When they look at that brown tan, it just so, so cool. And that's kind of what it, it reminds me of. And that was when we were talking about tobacco dials and all these different colors. Um, well, and that's what's so hard to do with this is it's so very, very easy to overshoot it and to make it look like a movie prop. You know, I mean, I, I don't want to hack on brands, but there's, you know, a couple of brands that have done these rusted, we found material from the bottom of the sea kind of look. And it just ends up being too much. It, it looks like a movie prop. It looks like a Christmas tree ornament in some cases. So actually, it, it's really odd for me that I would be involved with this watch because that is probably the most subdued watch that I've ever been a part of. I mean, look yeah, at it is. Look at the Sarpanevas. Look at the friggin' M- MW and Co. One coming out. I mean, that thing is like, there's gonna be helicopters trying to land on my roof if I put that thing on. Whereas this yeah, is very understated. You but wanted in, to put more luminous on the dial. I remember that. And yes, I, was, I did. And I and I just went no, no. And that was us going back and forth. But I think <laughs> that's where we work well as a partnership. Is is that thing of going, hey, you know, let's let's go back and forth on that. Well, and it's really fun because there's not a lot of opportunities for somebody that does what I do to actually get to speak with the person who's directly responsible for, for your brand, for the, for the brand in question. You'll sort of give some kind of crazy idea to some mid-level marketing, who cares, at a big brand. And they'll go, yeah, okay, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll email this around and see who looks interested. You know, and like at that point, it's like sending an email to, you know, info at disney.com you can hear the email hit the bottom of the barrel whereas with the way we're doing things well you know i ask you and you get the ghost of jack hoyer on the phone or something and and it happens within within a couple of hours and that is such a massive force multiplier because it lets us basically prototype with the end product so we already knew the carrera was the the platform to work from because it's got such a big chunk of landscape you know like it's almost architectural you got so much space and since we decided to remove the window the date window on the previous fortnight edition you know and you remove the indicators it's it's a ridiculous amount of space um and i think again it's very uncommon for my kind of work to be the more you remove the better it looks um i think if it, if we would have tried to put a bunch of cute little glow things on it or more little sort of cheesy coffee references it would just become (sighs) ironic i don't know if that's the right word but like i thought about should we should we put a little tiny bit of white here white ink in it sorry well no so so you mentioned it's interesting when you think about the uh the process uh, of you know back and forth with this and everybody thinks of you uh, James is, you know, the king of glow, the king of loom. And indeed, everything I have from you glows like Chernobyl. And so <laughs> I, I know that when I even posted yeah, go wash your hands watch, right now. <laughs> seriously, but I know that when I posted um, this watch, you know, some people were saying, well, wait, how is this uh, a Black Badger production? Because it wasn't glowing. And so now I'm hearing, now, to me, it makes perfect sense. I know how you operate and all the crap yeah. you work with. But well, well and it's funny. Curious, what what was it 
on this because to me, seeing the finished product, it can only look like this. But I know that it it starts differently. Where would you have stuck Loom on this thing? Your the glowing coffee watch is now something that I feel like I have to see. I didn't know I needed that, but now I need so, to see that. So you know Adam, what? I, I know there was a band in there, uh, James. It, you see where the sixty and fifteen and that was yeah. there was a there was a band that we could put an luminous band in there and yep. there was also some other pieces james uh, you know james you can say about this but it was also simplicate simplicate don't com uh, sorry simplicate don't complicate is what what mm -hmm. we kept on saying yeah yeah i mean it the watch as it is i find has a very sporty 1960s kind of vibe to it you know like it's got almost kind of a kennedy on a sunday kind of vibe to it and I think if you would have put a bunch of Loom in it, simply because I'm the Loom idiot, you would have just confused the message. Even with the Fortnite yeah. watch. I mean, good Lord. That's true. Good. Yeah. Hey, find me some Loom on that. Oops, pardon me. Can you see it? There's this, Jesus Christ, the second hand. The second hand is Loom. Everything else, we've actually removed the Loom entirely so that there's wow. no Loom on it. So that you're actually letting the material of the dial take center stage and tell its story without getting interrupted by some loudmouth idiot tapping on the shoulder saying i glow i glow too hey guys hey look at glow because i've told i've told that story so many times and before i was the glow guy i was the carbon fiber guy a couple years ago so everything i did people would say oh where's the carbon fiber on it I'm like fuck i'm constantly having to reinvent myself simply i work from materials forward perspective so if you want to make a watch out of I mean, you know, it's like Frank Gehry making a chair out of cardboard and it's the coolest, sexiest chair you've ever seen. The material is buck worthless, pardon me, but the art and the way that you work that very humble material is what makes it beautiful. Bricks and steel are not especially sexy. Look at the Chrysler building. I mean, come on, you know, it's all about just elevating it and not... See it from right there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the other thing is when you God, look that's at cool. the dial it comes alive <laughs> yep. and that's the thing is you know when i look at images the images are good you know um thank you very much to our photographer sorry um just kind of uh uh saying that about him but uh, you look at the dial when you look at it in your hand it comes alive and when it it goes in the light you see i mean james has kind of been looking under a microscope uh, a massive microscope that I haven't been doing. I've been looking under a loop, but you see. I will say, do, do not let color. your wife look at her diamond ring under a microscope. I'm just going to put that out there right now. Don't do it. Nothing looks good. Like, but, but also, Adam, go, coming back to your question, <laughs> you know, you think about um, Hoyer and Illuminous. You know, I'm I'm holding up as you can see a, a, the full Illum dial. Um, Hoya. and you know they they've done it in you know for living daylights and and you know there is, it was those type of watches and and i just i don't know when we we started out we it was almost <coughs> like i we wanted to do something different something unexpected because the thing is that people would expect the same they'd expect yeah. a black watch from me they'd expect you know a full a glow new, watch from uh, me you know so basically they would expect this watch yeah yeah what what really well, you, you definitely got something people didn't expect yeah and the thing is people don't have to like it i mean i'm i'm aware that we took an absolute shit whipping in some of the comments on instagram and stuff and that's fine cuz people were talking about it love it or hate it i'm you know we can still be friends either way what you don't want is people to just you know well you know i, I saw an interview that noticed. you did with, uh, with the lads or the blokes or however you want to call them uh, with the time tide guys down in australia yeah yeah, and you said, you know, the, the second I just kick out a just a regular old stainless steel dive watch, like stick a fork in me, you know, something yeah. to that effect. You know, this give is me, not give me two in the coconut. I won't be mad. I won't you. haunt you or yeah. anything. Like I, I personally think it looks fantastic, but I have to say, people got pretty creative with some of the comments. Um, yeah, and you rolled with it. <laughs> Uh, I think it, it's been a couple of weeks, so I can publicly admit it. I was on the war path in the worst possible way. George had to talk me down off the ledge a couple of times. <laughs> because I'm not Look used to this. Because like with a lot of these projects, it's, it's piggybacking, if, if I may be a little, you know, shoot myself in the foot here, piggybacking on the back of a very well-respected established brand, like Stefan Sarpaneva, like Max Busser and these brands. You know, I can just show up and just like drink a cup of coffee in the background, and it's still going to be a huge success. 
but with this one, we, we really put it out there quite a bit. Um, and I think what really makes it a valuable design to me is that the, the fact that it's coffee doesn't really matter. People look at the watch like, oh, that's a really cool dial. Or if they hate it, fine, you know, but they look at it and it invites you just like the Fortnite to get in closer and have this little bit of a dialogue, if you will, and pick out all the little nuances that you don't see at arm's distance. And you might just, oh, that's some kind of cool brown stone. Hmm. Oh, I like it. And then someone says, well, yeah, it's actually coffee. And then you've built a whole second layer of sort of tertiary value to the design. Because as soon as you say it's coffee, they're like, what how i mean how did you do it but james i do remember when you, we were going through this and we that means you were making the dial and then when it came over to our, our dial printers i remember you going through it and going like your fingers were kind of getting sanded down to the 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 bare bone almost and, yeah and you, you're going this bloody thing and you know and blood it, soaks really well into coffee it, it's yeah it's a nice it, color but it was about the time it took so much time yeah. and even like I, I remember you going back and forth and like uh, on whatsapp we were we were seeing on and you're like you're like oh, i'm going to take this little layer off because it's going to give a little bit more of a nuance and, and it really is you know what you say about a piece of art it's it's one of those things that it, it yeah. really is that piece of art it's, it's getting into that and saying you know we're the build-up of it and i'm sure that everyone wants to know how it came about and also the coffee um uh, you know, what was a coffee house and what was the grind of coffee? Yeah, I remember absolutely. being asked that recently and I thought, you know, people may like that. I'll tell the story, but I can almost guarantee that I'm, I'm going to wander a bit like grandpa really? telling war stories. What? So like dangle Never. your keys in front of me and keep me on task here. Not um, you. I know, right? Really? No, really? What's that? Push a boot? Your... Eh? What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll see myself. I'm just going to finish my drink here, I guess. Basically, um, is, how, how is the rosy James? It's it's lovely. I'm drinking it out of my extra butch manly uh, discommon <laughs> mug. That now yeah, that I look at it, really love that. Does that not look like the most X-rated mug you've ever seen? Now it does a little bit, yeah. But the, the, yeah, I'm I'm catching overtones of penis. It's yeah. very Geiger, my giant aluminum penis. Yeah, nice. Anyhow, Can you put that to your lips again. <laughs> Let me just. I'm, I'm going to see myself out. <laughs> I need a straw. <laughs> um, you know, the, the way the coffee watch came... Fuck you guys. The, uh, <laughs> um, the, um, there's a really famous coffee shop here, here in, in Gothenburg, lovely Gothenburg, Sweden, where I'm currently sitting, uh, called Cafe de Mateo. And what's really cool is it actually got listed on Lonely Planet Guidebook as one of the top five cafes in the world. Uh, last year which is nuts because this isn't exactly a huge city but it's like you know it's like the hipster stronghold there's guys with big mustaches they, they do the the grinding and the roasting and they're just jedi level nerds about this and it, they just renovated the hell out of it it's a super nice cafe so i've gone in there and done uh, I've, a couple small photo shoots for other projects and stuff because it's a really cool background so we would go in there and always go in, in de mateo and i got to know the people and they would actually do the, the roasting and the grinding of the beans in the same room where you're sitting. So like if there's nowhere to sit in the main cafe, will you bring a chair into the roastery and just sit there and nobody minds and they start chatting with you while you're sitting. So it's really kind of like a living cafe while you're in there. And I just out of nowhere just started talking to this, this young dude, Daniel, who works there. And I was showing on my watch because uh, he's, he's kind of an amateur watch geek as well. And uh, we just started talking about materials and stuff. And as he was grinding all the beans and they had all these pucks that had come out of the, the espresso things downstairs, he was like, well, why can't we use that? Like what happens to all the, all the grinds once they're used? Pardon me. Allergy man. So we had originally thought about using, about reusing coffee that had been used in the, in the cafe. But the problem is, there would be so much work in kiln drying and getting all that moisture out that it would be about 10 times as much work. So it's sort of, we kind of poo pooed that idea a little bit. And I actually sat down with some of their, their, the coffee importers and actually the, the CEO, the guy that owns De Mateo, really nice, really tall guy named Christopher. Um, it's Sweden. So everyone's taller than me. 
<laughs> and he uh, fucking sucks. Um, and we actually picked the specific roast and grind and type of beans that would give us this kind of really dark mahogany chocolatey kind of look that we wanted. Um, and then from there, they actually took like an old kind of big beefy industrial, like 1960s era espresso bean grinder. They opened it up and they started screwing around with the parts to make it a much, much finer grind. Um, if you say the average espresso machine is, say has a dial that goes one to 10, one being the finest, this grind is probably about a minus two or a three. Um, it is like talcum powder when it came out of the machine, which is actually, as someone told me, is if you're doing Turkish coffee that kind of percolate on the, on the stovetop, you would use that kind of a grind for it, uh, which really I found quite entertaining because a couple of people looked at the pictures of the watch and went, oh, you should have used a finer grind. It looks really chunky. Good Lord, you could almost snort this stuff. It is just super, super fine. And it gave a really nice, quite a rich, homogeneous kind of look on it. And uh, when you actually attach it to the dial, you've got the main base plate of the Tag Heuer Carrera. It's about, George, back me up here. It's like 0 0.15, 0 0.2 millimeters thick or something. Yeah, it's it, it. I think you're you're right. I think the point it's just five. tiny. It, 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 and the thing is, when you're when you're sat, it, it, it can bend quite easily, can't it? So you've got to be very careful. Yeah, especially, especially when and you also clear, go to clearance. Clearance is, is is a pain as well because of the hand clearance as well. So you've got such a specific amount of room that you can work with. Um, if it's too thick, obviously it doesn't work. The watch doesn't close. If it's at all unparalleled, if it's 0.005 millimeters off from the left side to the right side, your movement's going to be crooked and your watch is going to crap out in a few months. So this was really terrifying because I did these all by hand. There's no CNC work in these at all. I made a little aluminum jig to hold them in place and it was just hand sanding it on, on wet sandpaper. So actually as you were getting thinner and thinner and thinner, you started getting really quite interesting uh, sort of interplay is on the dial where some parts it was a little more concentrated some parts it was a little more spread out some parts it was a little lighter some parts it was a little darker some parts all the crystals were pointing off in a certain direction really really fun and like with the fordite i didn't have a huge amount of control as to what the material was going to do um i just had to kind of stay out of the way and not talk it up too badly but, although, but, although James, <laughs> but James, when I, I, when we were selecting this, the you know coronavirus or the the lockdown was has pushed us into the uh, Carrera that really actually um, worked for us on on this. But I remember with the Fordite, you know, it was that back and forth. I remember you sending one dial over to us. And you know, I was saying about clearance and things like that, and then, and it was that when you built that jig, it it then became quite a lot easier. But it's also, yeah. you know, when when you're doing it, you're you are. Um, I I did describe you a while ago, and I'm probably describing you. You're the mad scientist that actually delivers, and and that's what I freaking <laughs> love about you, man. Is that you, you know, it's like. The you mad know, scientist it, that never got above seventy percent in science class. Whoop. Yeah, but no, but Jim, Jim, in any other company, you know, most of them are in lockdown. They're not doing shit, and you and I are just like, yeah, let's do it. And that's what I lo I loved about it. That's what I'm having so much fun with is that, and and also there's, I don't want to sort of bite the hand that feeds me, but it's it's an interesting time. Is that so many of the big brands are kind of closing their borders and you know boarding up the windows and hunkering down, and and you and I are running around naked in the streets with a torch in each hand so it's actually kind James, of a, i think you're kind of running around naked but you know it, it's actually 28 degrees right now at uh 7 30 here so 8 30 so i actually might run around naked later <laughs> please we don't, I don't i don't know i don't know if everyone wants to hear about you no. oh around. no continue i want to <laughs> hear about this maybe <laughs> uh, maybe there's going to be an idea for a watch too um i must to do some sit-ups first um, no, but it's really fun because it's this situation really levels the playing field because if we were to release this watch and then 20 minutes later Patek releases something and then Rolex puts out, you know, 37 new watches that day or something, we would just get lost in the shuffle. 
but because everybody, all the big dogs are kind of, you know, taking it easy right now, it, it's a really good time for the smaller independents to just make a crap load of noise. And that's what we're doing here. But Adam, you must have seen that with, with a lot of those, the brands that are really rocking. I mean, you look at it like um, Zenith, um, you know, Julian quickly jumped. Uh, social media rocked, you know, Zenith was on fire on, on the social media, you know, some of the brands really pushed out, you know, um, you, you look at some of the people that have done the interviews, you look at um, Mont Blanc, what they did, you know, there's some really good things that are happening. I, I don't know what you think, Adam. Oh, I think that uh, this has been a, a wonderful uh, <laughs> opportunity for brands to show that they're listening. And the ones who have been listening and the ones who have adapted, uh, you know, have really, as, as you pointed out, James, too, been able to shine. Uh, and there have been a few of the big guns who, who have kind of embraced uh, the current situation. And we can also see the ones that sort of fell to the wayside and didn't really have a plan for it. Uh, but, you know, it's funny, and I didn't even really think about it until James brought it up, but it makes perfect sense, you know, that, that you did make a bigger splash, probably. Um, because the fact is that you guys were behind the scenes running around apparently naked with torches um, doing this shit. Yeah. You know, but this is it. Look, even what we're doing now, this is all part of this. Everybody, I think, figuring out in a, in a post COVID world, how do we how do we still do what we do? This kind of um, feels like it's the new Instagram. Right. Well, you know like, what, though, the, because the beauty, to me, the people that aren't doing this right yeah. now are, are falling behind. Well, I don't want to get off on a tangent here because we still want to talk about you and the watches. But I do think that what's interesting is we had the ability to do this the whole time. Yeah. And it kind of took this, uh, you know, crisis for us to, to dig into the toolbox. Um, you know, Kathleen's been Johnny on the spot with all of this. You know, if it were up to me, you know, we, we would be, you know, still back there. So you got to look at the people who actually know how to use this stuff. Um, yeah. I'm but I still... Wait, just really quickly though, before we, no, no, you go first because then I'm going to bring it back to the watch. So Kathleen, say something. Yeah, no, I just wanted to say, you know, that's that's right. I mean, we had a we had a YouTube channel set up, and 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 we weren't using it really for anything um, until until this all happened. But we, you know, we all had the ability to do Instagram lives mm -hmm. to interview people and all of that stuff. We didn't truly at this point in time. We don't truly need to go to. Uh, Basel world, which doesn't exist anymore, but you know, we don't need to go there physically to see a new release. And we kind of haven't for a while. And to your point, James, it's like that, you know, the, the brands that are, there are, and, and George as well, like some, some brands are, are taking this opportunity to like make a lot of noise and talk a lot about what they're doing on digital channels where the Swiss, industry as a whole has been very slow to embrace digital and yeah. kind of forcing their hand. And I think the, 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 the people who are out there talking about what they're doing and embracing that digital channel. And you know what, some, some of them have gone better than others. There's a few that I've seen, a few Instagram lives have gone, gotten a little, gotten a little uh, sideways, but you know, the brands that are out there, like at least attempting to, adapt and attempting to embrace digital are the ones that I think are going to come out of this um, in a good way. Totally That's agree. And, and I think, I think some people are still being so stoic about it, whether the, the old guard of the Swiss watch industry looks at it as, you know, like when was the last time you saw a Lamborghini TV commercial? You don't, we don't need to advertise. We're Lamborghini, you know, we're the best thing ever. And I think a lot of the Swiss, brands, the, again, the real sort of old guard ones are looking at it like, well, Instagram, that's for, that's for those darn kids and their rap music kind of thing, which, which of course isn't the case. I mean, it feels like, again, post Instagram world now, and this is the new medium. I mean, I'm old enough. I remember when Instagram was pictures. Crazy. Now it's just, what? I know. That was just TikTok, people dancing to songs and. Don't, I don't, I'm too old to and TikTok. I don't know. I just don't care. Um, but Kathleen, I, I agree with you about some of the brands uh, doing some great projects. And, you know, you look at what Breitling did, George Kern really knocked it out of the, bar, the park. AP, I'll be right back. you know, they, they rocked in their, their way. I mean, every, you know, some of the brands really pushed forward. And 
you know, social media has has worked very well. I mean, I've noticed. Um, so, I've, I, as you may have been seeing on my social media, is I've been doing the GB asks, um, and that's because I'm kind of a little bit. Um, the best way of describing it. I, I like seeing people and like chatting to people. Um, I'm probably uh, a bit like James is that we probably could talk for the for the rest of our lives to everyone and and uh, this kind of medium works for us except James has disappeared. But I would say is that you know I wanted to start GB Asks because I wanted to get people together and I wanted to actually ask some questions of friends. And I think Thank what happened is like this like youtube like all of these channels we're now wanting to to interact with people and if we can't interact face to face and what you said about basel well you know the face to face chatting and the things like that you know it started pushing away from that anyway because we already saw all the brand new watches before we even got into basel you know so that was kind of one of those things that i you know so then it was just about the hanging out and I think the hanging out is part and parcel of this, and I think this is why this works so well. Yeah, I always have a really bit of a difficult situation <clears throat> with with specifically that, George. Is the the hanging outside? I love it. You know, like I I go to Basel Wait, are you to, back? To, to see you guys. Really? Never? Is, it, is that James is back? No. Yeah. I we ran out of wine. About, we were talking about you. Had to go get more coffee. Um. No, but at the same time, like as, as fun as it is to go to all the fun parties and get all the drinks and the food and stuff, I, I meet people like you, Adam. I met you at SIHH, you know. Uh, that George, was hilarious. Like, George, I was avoiding you for years. I mean, you were just like a lumberjack. <laughs> I didn't even know how they let you in there. I don't know how they let me. <sighs> but James, the first time we met was in, in London. Yeah. At some event, and you were going up the stairs and I was going down, or I was going down the stairs and you were going up. And it was like literally both of us were like, We've got to Our hang eyes out. met. No, no, we like, met. we've got to hang out. I was like, I fucking love you, man. And you were like, yeah, we've got to hang out. And it was like, literally, both of us gave it each was, other the cards. It was Salon QP like, in London. Yeah, Salon QP. Yeah. That was yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. That, sounds, that sounds right, based on the going up and down the street. Yeah. Pit, trying, to find, yeah. trying to find the bathroom and sweating profusely. No, Adam, I met you at SAHH, and it was, it was such an embarrassing day because I didn't realize the show was at the airport. So I flew in to... Geneva, right? Yeah. yeah, it's Geneva. Gen Shut up. And I was going to go back to the hotel, get myself all prettied up and come back to the show. I didn't realize it was all the way back where I started. So I just thought I would just pop in and kind of say hi at the show. So I had like the clothes that I flew on the plane with. And it was this giant red super Canadian lumberjack shirt with a big maple yeah. leaf on the back. <laughs> and and, and yeah. I walk in and it's all like sexy cocktail dresses and everyone's all dressed up like James Bond. I hate getting dressed up. And so people looked at me like I was there to like to like pick up like the that. empty bottles or something. I was jealous. I was actually angry. That was but, fun. Uh, but one interesting thing about that, and, and this is actually going to tie back into just all the weird shit that you guys do. Um, Yes, it's 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 we have the technology. We we can do these meetings now. It kind of throws into question just how vital these shows are. And obviously, there's the social aspect. But one thing I really got a kick out of when I was there with you is that I had I got to handle your watch. You were wearing the uh, the Black Badger HMX, yep. and and which is a fantastic piece on its own. And then I think I might have even because I always carry UV light. Probably did like kind of this thing just even in the bright lights of. Uh, SIHH. And so there really still isn't a substitute, obviously, for getting hands on with the stuff. Now, one thing I've never been able to get hands on with is, is the watch actually that you're wearing right now. Um, the Fordite pieces. Yeah. No, thank you. Now, here's, can you explain to some people, because we've talked about the, the coffee watch, I mean, the whole genesis of that thing is nuts. But this material is nuts. And where the hell do you get it? How do you get it? Is it just from Ford? And whose idea was it to do this watch? You have to squeeze a leprechaun really, really, really hard under a full moon. <laughs> and this is... You know, I suspected that was the case, but I need to hear it from the horse's mouth. False ally, false ally's leprechaun turds. Um, it can come from other brands, but... Yeah. Jesus. You lost Kathleen there. Jesus. Keep it together. Um, I'll be here all week. Try the roast beef. Um, um, tip your waitress. So there is a co uh, Covite or Corvite, Corvite and Macite that you tried to do, but they don't use the same yeah. campaigns. I mean, 
fordite is kind of the accepted industry term for, I guess you call it amalgamated car paint. If it comes out of Toyota, it might be called Toyotite, but I, I could not tell you anybody that's ever used car paint from Toyota or Honda or in, even big fancy sexy brands. But Ford, basically when they would paint cars in these giant American, you know, Detroit car factories, um, it was all semi-automated, but still people spraying it. So all like the doors and the hoods would all be mounted on like jigs that would go through this assembly line of primer, top coat, clear coat, and you would you know, you don't paint one at a time. You, you're painting just crap loads of this. And after you painted like a couple thousand cars, all the overspray that builds up, like every bolt that holds a piece in place, after you've painted 5,000 cars, that bolt is now the size of an apple. And it's all layers and layers and layers and layers and layers of beautiful, pristine car paint. And that same mounting hardware has also gone through the ovens and all the carrying systems hundreds of times. So this piece is like a rock. And you would need to chip it off as part of routine maintenance because it just gets in the way. Like the walls and the work surfaces are caked in this shit. And some enterprising person decided to cut it in half and went, oh, this is interesting. It's, I mean, I've got pieces that are a full inch thick and they represent yeah. at least hundreds hundreds of cars being painted what's really interesting is where it's dripped because if it just settles in uniform layers you know it's a bit like pages in a book it's not that exciting these nodes that kind of almost like stalactites where it sort of makes kind of a formation does it make yeah. that sound too it's yeah i got a girl for i got a girl it's, it's very technical it's a technical term Sorry, it's a Swedish thing. That's actually a word in Swedish. <laughs> it's, it's, I, mean, I mean, if you look at this, all these, yeah. this was eight seconds of work for when it was just a lump. And you, just, and you get all these fantastic colors. And even like in the white, if you look at this in high def, you can see the white section, there's actually three or four layers of white in there. So even on my watch where it's the big sort of uninterrupted red section over here, that red actually has, it's actually two or three layers of red. So you get this almost like topographical lines on a map. So this material has been around. The, the stuff that I get, um, I've got a supplier in the U.S. whose father-in-law worked at the Ford plants in Dearborn, Michigan, uh, from sort of 1970s to 1990s era. You can get the brand new stuff, but it sort of isn't, I wouldn't say it's not legit, but like it doesn't have that street cred. You know, like you got, it's got to be 70s. Also because car paint mm. up until about 1990s was crap. It was so full of chemicals and solvents. And that's why it goes bloody rock hard because it was, you know, and now modern car paint. I mean, I, I put a ridiculous amount of work into trying to develop something like this with McLaren over the last couple of years. But their car paint is absolutely beautiful but it's water-based. Most supercar paint is water-based. It's more environmentally friendly and it's a little softer. So if a little rock hits your $4 million car on the highway, the paint actually kind of has a bit of elasticity to it. So that's great for the car, but it sucks for Jimmy T because it doesn't really work to actually, that's my nickname, to actually sand things out of. So and for this type of work, you. the eye goes to Goldblum. Um, <laughs> So it had actually worked so much better having this uh, crappy industrial paint as compared to the really sexy new stuff. So I have a friend who, who's, as I said, whose who's family member worked for Ford and was a smart enough guy that over the years he would just, when he was cleaning, he would just take a big brick like the size of a phone catalog and just chuck it in his locker. Wow. See, like with this, I mean, it's, don't let me take an ounce of credit. I kid you not. This is 30 seconds on the bandsaw and, you know, wet sanding for the length of one song on, my, um, on the speakers. But it looks like, like if you see the, the, the First Nations art of the West Coast of Canada, totem poles and all this kind of stuff, it's got such a similar vibe to this. You get all these undulating lines that will never, ever intersect because in this case, they're actual formations. And it, maybe it'll, you'll have a, a really dramatic shot of yellow in there, 
uh, I was working with some Fordite today that was all just kind of brown and tan. It was just, you know, I was falling asleep well, while I was 70s. working on it. <laughs> yeah, it was like WKRP in Cincinnati. Like it was just yeah. super 70s brown and dull. But then you look at this and it's just sexy as hell. It looks so good. And but it, from, but, go ahead. Sorry, James. I, what I, I remember when you and I were looking at materials and looking at what we were doing. And I, I remember reminiscing about stone dials and, you know, the yeah. different stone dials. And we just was like, you know, stone has been done. It's been done for a long time. This was something new. And, you know, you, Adam, you just said trippy in the 70s. You know, for me, that was the vibe. And I was also like, you know, I, I, I've been known for certain colors, predominantly black and aqua blue, but it was that kind of reaction, you know, James is, is known for a luminous. And that was, I think our first one was that kind of thing of like, let's just throw something that is so different out there. And, you know, the reaction was absolutely amazing. I mean, it's, uh, it's why um, I put up with James um, ever since because, you know, it's such a good project. Um, now I'm well, and also I've got those pictures of you with the goat. Oh, yeah, sorry, I forgot about that one. <laughs> Don't you forget. Don't you forget. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's such a departure because it's not a blacked out watch, you know, which is, you know, the absolute lowest common denominator you can say of your stuff. It's not all the crazy customizations. It's not just blacked out. And, it's, and from my end, it's not just the glow watch. I mean, the only thing that glows in this one is, is the second hand. Yeah, because we no, we took off the loom of, of the dial uh, of yeah. the hands because because we both were like we want to have it almost anti that and that, you know that going picture back to was the actually taken uh, right there on the yeah. outside of that fountain right there. Yay. That's really um, exciting. True story. But then you you look at the coffee dial. The hands uh, have the loom on, but it's very oh, simple. Look at that. Yeah, this this is kind of it's um, so good. Well, and I guess it's like the box of chocolates. They say, you know, you don't know what you never get know what you're you going to get. That, I, and they're you all cut unique. it open. Yeah, everyone I mean, with, has to be. With I mean, the coffee dial, you know, it was, we, we mixed coffee in with this really optically clear casting resin. So you knew that you were going to get coffee with this. Mm -hmm. No idea. You can look at the cross section of it and see, okay, well, it's got yellow here and it's got some blue here. But if it's a piece this big, I mean, no, a yeah. any little, you know, it's like the princess and the pea story. One little grain of sand, you know, at the top layer, once you've gone down off. through an inch, will make an effect like that sort of eye pattern on the left. So you're almost like a gemstone person where you need to look at the raw diamond and get really like existential and try and figure out what that material is doing two inches inside in multiple axes. It is mind bending. That's maybe why I drink out of a penis mug. That's but, a good point. Yeah. And like, I well, but this one, that. I didn't have any control whatsoever as to what the final product was going to look like. Um, George and I had back and forth over this so many times. There was one of them. It was about half finished, and it had the sexiest color pattern of yes. all time. This was the yes. the famous uh, '80s Macintosh color scheme yes. watch it was so epic and oh, i looked at yeah. it and like i took a picture and i sent it to my wife and i'm like this is it i can retire after this and then i measured it and like the the dials needed to be uh, point point five millimeters thick in total i think and this was like 0.7 so it was like oh. took a picture of it and then within of sanding those colors were gone and something and it, it was such a poetic, you know, it was like scattering someone's ashes. It was just, it was a moment. It was gone, you know. God, I like that watch. I really yeah. miss that dial. So, yeah. Oh, go on. But that's really difficult to actually let go of something like that and not try and force it to be a certain color you want. Yeah. Well, like David said in the, in the chat, you know, this is... Was David still here? Okay. Yeah. Um, it's it's just it is such a cool thing to see that this is essentially like kind of an organic material that came out of an industrial process like it yeah. it you know because it's not you're not controlling how this yeah this uh, looks at all like you you it's just it's dumb fucking luck basically like you just yeah. up a thing and going oh, that will be the title of my memoirs dumb fucking luck dumb fucking luck I like that 
I mean, yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. 10%. Ten. So <laughs> no. You'll be lucky. Go ahead, Adam. Um, well, I'm looking, you know, we're, we're, we're getting towards the top of the hour here. Yeah. And it, we, we, we've talked about the coffee watch, which I love every part of it from its inception, its execution to its reception, both good and bad. I think that's exactly what a watch like that should be. And, and I did enjoy some of the more colorful criticisms of it as well. Um, hey, you know, I'm on that level. I like poo jokes. But I don't know if you know this, talk, but coffee is brown and, and poo is brown also. Yes. No. Really? It's, so it's, it's, yeah, the jokes write themselves. But uh, but we talked about the Ford, which honestly, I, I'm now I'm becoming a little obsessed with this material. I know you've also uh, incorporated it into your rings. And, you know, one of these days we're going to have to talk about that because I would love to have something like that. But can you there give you us, go. There you go, Dave. Here we, there, yeah, he's yeah. Well, he's got how many? Wait, just before I ask my question, how many rings does David have now? Uh, I need to make him some more, actually. Because uh, he's got a ton. Because he's got pictures he's of me with a goat. So. <laughs> yeah, because that is gorgeous. <laughs> I am the goat. As you know, I've just got my old, uh, can we see Mr. Buck Trump there? Um, but, but my question is, can you give us even the, the barest, slightest hint of, of what's possibly coming next? Because I know you guys don't sleep. And so... Um, this, there's yeah. got to be. I know there's something else percolating. I think Man. by the end of by oh. the end of this year, you'll you'll see. Is it two or three projects, James? Do you think we'll? Jesus. Yeah. Three, four. Maybe four. I think okay. it's four so, actually. Okay. Yeah. No, oh, that's not a flattering angle for me. Oh. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> there's a. Now. Yeah. Yeah, it's three or four. Three or four by the end of the year. So what? What's the? So, so we the next one will be a prototype. So we're going to launch a prototype, and that's that's something that we're launching to the market that has never been launched to the market. New material that's not been, I don't think, has ever been used in a case before. Do you think? Nope, James. Nope, um, absolutely hasn't. And absolutely hasn't. That that will be uh, using another. Uh, it'll be on a Zenith watch. That's all I can say. Wow. All right. Well, I mean, it's definitely um, giving it's, us something it's forward fr It's to. freaking cool. It's one of those things that... I'm so jazzed um, about it. But the thing is that we've been back and forth about the dial for so long. You know, everything else is kind of... But that dial has just taken so long to get it. Well, I thought we agreed on using peanut butter for the dial. We spoke about this oh, before. Oh, fuck off with peanut butter. I'm like... Every time he keeps on wanting to make a case out of peanut butter, I'm like, it's like poking no. a monkey with a stick. Come on, I, well, I still remember you mentioned a pizza watch, which I'm down with. So you, you got one one sale for that. Is that we're not talking about the pizza watch, are we? Uh, no, we right. could be you're making a you're making a watch out of pizza, the whole case. I guarantee you, that's never been done before. Uh, and I don't. <laughs> It always makes me think of that line from Jurassic Park where he says, you were so busy to think if you could, you didn't stop to think if you should. And, I, and, I, and I've had that line said about a few of the watches that I've done. So. <laughs> Qua? Qua? Yeah. Why? Well, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. So. That's right. Boom. You guys no, are crazy, though. Fine. I mean, what a, what a, thank God you two met. You know, yeah. otherwise we wouldn't have this, this psycho shit. So It's, I mean, it's we need so this. much fun. The industry needs this because it has to be fun. It does, it, it, and I, it think, does. I think we're in such a unique position, or I should say uh, George has allowed me to be in such a unique position that it's, it's such a, as I keep saying, it's such a short production uh, group that it, 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 if there's too many people, you have to come into the idea, like by the 20th time you've had to read somebody your elevator pitch, you know, like your own eyes are kind of rolling back in your head a little bit. Whereas yeah. again, with this garage rock analogy, we're we're making this up as we go, man. You don't worry, nobody saw that. Oh, it's perfect. It's so much fun. Yeah. I've never written a rough copy in my life. I don't even have a sketchbook. This this is how we do it. We 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 sketch in the material, and there's going to be occasions where it's going to shit the bed in the most epic way possible. Write it out, man. Well, I think, philosophy. I think. Oh, wrong. I think that's why we're doing the um, uh, the next one will be this prototype dial because uh, sorry dial no it's not a dial actually uh, but uh, I know no. the, the, 
No, definitely not a dar. Uh, well, maybe a dar. Maybe not. I, I don't know. Uh, but we're doing a prototype as the next one is because it is something that is so hard to to get, you know, into into a mass ma um, manufacturing way that yeah. I think we'll. I think it's one of those things that it's going to be very much, you know, unique pieces each one personalization exactly what we do at Bamford and exactly what James is doing but we're gonna have we're gonna have fun with the next one um, I, I'm trying to we're trying to figure out when to launch it and what's you know what's the right vibe for it because to get over to everyone but you know when you say about when we met I mean I think James and I were a bit like um, two dogs sniffing each other's whatever's uh, for quite a while uh, yeah, well, you said it. I didn't. Uh, but, That's where uh, I recognize you from. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> but we, I, you know, it took a while for you and I to really inappropriate gel Christmas and work, card too. You know, gel and work because it was one of those things. Was you know, I think you said to me, "Am I dealing with you, or am I going to deal with other people in your business?" And I was just like, "No, you deal with me." Yeah. And I think it was that that we. I think you were just like, "What? Okay." And I was just like, "Yeah," because. If we're going to do something, we've got to be creative. And, you know, it goes back to when I was a photographer and, and you know, you, if you work with a client directly, you, you, you get a good answer. Yeah. Well, and, 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 and the and, other and, thing is the buck stops with me. Well, that's the other thing. And like, you know, I can sort of joke around and screw around about doing all these sort of, you know, burn it all down kind of ideas. But let's be very frank. If I cock it up, it's, you know, it's your money and it's your brand it's your name on the dial so there of course is obviously the, this level of uh, i don't want to call it self-censorship that needs to happen but there you know there does need to be a bit of intelligence behind it it can't just be Bleh. um but also i mean with a lot of these well, i would say with with one with one of the mega brands that i've kind of currently recently did something with i thought i was dealing directly with them but every communication, every little, can we do this? How do we do this? Here's my ideas for this. It's going through some external third party hired out. And every time it's like this person, like, who are you? And why are we talking about this? And, oh, do you have an NDA? Yes, I've signed it four times. And it just, I, it just makes me just want to run flying out the window. Whereas with the way they were doing things with, you know, need mad words. It's just, it's so quick and it's so furious and there's, you know, it's just, it's water flying out of a dam. There's, there's nothing really getting in the way of it. I don't want to say it's like jazz because that sounds really corny with me saying that, but it's, it's, it is. The project is designing itself as we go. We try and make yeah. something, it fucks up and it burns down half my studio. We go, huh, okay, well, we'll do that for the next one. For this one, mm -mm -mm. And we're, we're, we're discovering as we go. And that is something that I don't think a lot of brands have the luxury of doing. Yeah. Because I, it's just a couple of us. James, I agree with you. It, it's, really? it's like, you know, how Man Ray, uh, you know, I, I go to photography, he goes to music, but, you know, Man Ray with the rare graphs and all those kind of wonderful um, way of doing photography. You know, I always love when something comes alive when you're developing and that, that was kind yeah. of one of my things was I, I used to always love being in in this in the um development studio and just seeing this this come alive and that's when you know you and I talk and we see that Fordite coming alive and doing those things but there is also there is an edit as well and I, I'd say to you is that yeah. there is an edit you know we edit ourselves the whole way through you know no loom on on the Fordite it was like zero loom you know zero you know, there was all these things that we went through, even like the dark gray finish, not black finish. It was, and then yeah. the same with the coffee. It was very much, you know, we could have put so much more on it. And we were talking about cappuccinos and we were talking about throffy milks and, you know. Well, exactly. And, I mean, and we were like, no fucking way. You know, we stopped it down. We were like, mm -hmm. we wanted it to be just so pure that you see the silver of the hands. And even the case, you know, the, there's no, it's really simple, but it very much is sometimes that thing about editing. You want little winks. You want little references. If it's too literal, you look at it once and you're like, I get it. You know, we're using white loom for the hands because there's obviously this palette connection of the dark coffee and maybe the, the white of the cup itself. 
the steel of the case, you know, or maybe it's like the relationship of the spoon kind of thing. But it doesn't need to be more than that. I had all these really stupid, like, oh, can we Cerakote the case in dark brown? I'm like, well, no, because then it just looks like a poo watch. Or uh, do we put a couple drops of white pigment into oh, the mixture? That, yeah. So it, ooh, you know, and it just, it gets to be cartoonish. You just want it to be a bit of a reference and a bit of a wink just to catch your attention. You don't want it to explain the whole damn story to you. You just want it to catch you a little bit. So with the way it's, with the coffee ones has resulted, I like it because of the color. It's dark brown and it's really kind of elegant and sexy. And then you explain to me, oh, yeah, we made it out of coffee. And first of all, they go, how? Then they go, why? And then they start telling their own coffee stories. Maybe somebody met their wife in a coffee shop or something, or they have some kind of, it, it's, it's like the wine industry. You know, it's not just, you, you can't advertise the taste of a wine, but you can advertise the Tuscan vineyards, the soil in Chateauneuf de Pop and all this kind of stuff. And that's kind of what we're sort of trying to do with this is just really play to the nuances without dumbing it down and just handing it to you. And now uh, Kathleen wants a glass of wine. And yeah. yeah, but, yeah. but, but but James, I mean, my ultra manly rosé for my penis cup. Yeah, that that was the thing is, I didn't think that David or Adam hadn't taken the piss out of you for rosé. So this is the you know, they're taking out the piss out of you for the the cup, but not rosé. So that's kind of uh, that was good. It brings it home. It's possible. It did. Full circle. Circle of life. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you guys. Much for it did. And for showing us these awesome watches. Um, and uh, we're very much looking forward to seeing what's coming next from you. Yeah, seriously. And, so and of course, I'm sure Adam will be in to get more <laughs> fuck Trump rings from you and, you know, as we, as we go along. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, again. Okay, Can't say, actually, from, from a purely showboating, bragging point of view, Landed the mother of all celebrity clients the other day for a ring. Yeah, not not a for one. the not for the fuck Trump ring, but that was a different guy. Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> nice. Cur currently designing a ring for Arnold. That's the Austrian oak. The Austrian oak. See, and it would be so easy to make a ring that looks like a Terminator and has the red glowing eyes or something, but then that would just be a little too on corny. a little a little too on the nose. All right, well, thank you. A little you. on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> and right, on that note, let's get out of here before he starts doing more impressions. Shit. Please, please, please get out of here before he does that. <laughs> Stay on the target. It ejects. <laughs> Stay on target. Thank you. Not a, not a tumor. <laughs> there is no bathroom. Uh, 